and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. So today's Tech Tuesday is about the wet palette. And uh, this idea of a wet palette's been around for a while, um, but I haven't really given it much thought because originally the wet palettes that were out there weren't great. And what a wet palette is, is basically it's a palette that utilizes a um, sponge or a piece of cloth that's moistened that will keep water-based paint water base will keep it liquid for a longer period of time than if you just put it out on a regular palette and had it dry out. So that's a huge advantage because you'll be able to work longer with the paint that you have on your palette because it's not instantly drying. Um, normally I use a, um, a tempered sheet of tempered glass for my palette which is obviously dry so I'll squeeze out the paint a drop of paint I'll use it as much as I can and then it'll eventually dry up I'll just scrape it off and keep going so I wanted to try to keep that paint alive essentially for a little bit longer so I started looking into maybe adding a little bit of retarders to the paint but that didn't really work out well changed the consistency and the way that the paint dried obviously so uh, that didn't work and then I started watching some um, uh, YouTubers who do a lot of scale modeling, specifically um, uh, miniature models, miniature gaming model uh, figures. And uh, they're all talking about this wet palette. And like I said, I haven't, I haven't used a wet palette in a while, so I wasn't quite sure of how it was going to work out. But um, I did a lot of reviews on or looked at a lot of reviews on them and uh, said, you know what, it's worth a shot. So the one I settled on is a wet palette from the company called Red Grass in Germany. And I'll post their link. Uh, and, and they really came highly recommended from a lot of different modelers. So uh, that's the one I ended up going with. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really amazing. So I'm going to show you the palette and how it works and, um, and what advantages it, it gives me in, in what I'm doing. So let me give you the, 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 like the rundown of how it, how it kind of goes together so you have an idea first and then, and then that'll help you kind of see you know, what it does. So what, what you get is um, a tr this two-part tray. It's, it's got a cover on it but, uh, and then the bottom part of it. And then the top part is a cover with a little rubber gasket on it. And uh, that all fits together really nicely like that. Um, and then what it also comes with are two of these uh, foam mold resistant sponge pads. So they're, they're you know, reasonably thick and um, just, uh, just a neat material. Uh, and then they also give you, with your palette it are 50 of these hydration paper sheets it's it's a very thin parchment paper and they're cut to fit exactly in there too um, and that's those are the components they also come with some bonus items like this little magnetized um, kind of little paint reservoir thing I use it for reducer which is nice and because it's magnetized you can just stick it right to the palette and there are two sets of magnets so there's one over here too in case you use it that way. That's kind of nice. It also has a elastic band so when you're if you're traveling with it you can close up the palette and then put the band on and that'll keep it secure which is kind of nice too. <clears throat> so the way that it works <clears throat> is you put the foam pad on the bottom of the tray. Actually I'll do it on the, the cover I just won't add water to it but you take your foam pad and you just drop it in the bottom of your tray and then you take water in this case I w was looking for deionized water because that's the water component in the paint that I use but distilled water will work well too so that's what this is so you fill the whole you fill the whole tray with distilled water so that it soaks into the pad and it's just like just moist on the top you don't want it floating in water um, and then you take the parchment paper and you just start at the at one end, drop it in, and then just lay it down. Now this will curl up, which is the reason for that is the reason why it curls up so right away is because this stuff will let some of the moisture through, uh, but not all of it. So it's very moisture receptive. So there's a little bit of moisture on the sponge right now, and as it picks up that moisture, it just curls up. Now what happens is when you have plenty of water on there like this one, this is all set up. The parchment will stick right to the foam. It won't. It won't move at all. The edges will curl while it's kind of acclimating, but um, but it'll it'll smooth right out. And then you're ready to go. Um, what it does is the the theory or the the science behind it is. 
the foam is sitting in this water and then the parchment is on top. So the top of the parchment is actually dry. It's cool to the touch. You can feel that there's something going on there, but it's, but it's not wet at all. So what happens is when you drop a little droplet of paint on this parchment, as the water evaporates out of the droplet of paint, it draws the water out from the, the sponge underneath in the same ratio. So as it's drawing out, as it evaporates out, it draws that, that water into the droplet again through the paint. So this paint droplet stays wet. Now I put these out yesterday and I left this open. I'll talk about that in a second, but I left this open all night and the paint is still is still wet. So I can still use this drop of paint. Normally a drop of paint will last about 10 to 15 minutes on my palette if I'm lucky, and then I'll have to scrape it off and go. So just by that alone is amazing. Um, and from there you can do all kinds of things like well I was worried about there being liquid on the top of this it changing the consistency of the paint which I didn't want it didn't do that I'll zoom you guys in a little bit so you can see what I'm looking at um, it didn't change the consistency of the paint at all which was pretty amazing um, it, uh, and it and it kept it open I mean when I first got it I got it about a week ago the two first two drops of paint that I had lasted about a week which is insane it's insane. So that was just really nice. Now, it's I didn't get this to save paint. What I did get this was to add workability time, working time to to my my palette, and it did that in spades. It did that great. I didn't expect one drop of paint to last a week, um, but but it really does. You know, really does keep that open. Now, I did the experiment last night of leaving this wide open. So when I was done at the end of the night, I just left it open. And um, it did, I mean, it drew out all the water. But again, that those droplets are still, are still kind of wet on the top. I mean, they're starting to get real thick and, and tacky, but, um, but that's still wet. That's, that's crazy to be open for 12 hours at night and still be workable. It's insane. So the only maintenance you really have to do, these sponges that, that come with the pad are apparently um, mildew and mold resistant, which is important because if you have something sitting in water over time, it's just going to mold and mildew. So that's an important thing. I did hear a trick um, from some of the other modelers that if you put a piece of copper in, in the palette, wet palette, It'll help to uh, discourage mold too. I don't know if that works yet, I'm, um, but I figured I'd try it out. So I just grabbed a uh, a little bit of copper wire, and I have I have um, basically two of them, one here, and then there's one on the top too, so that they're right there. But um, yeah, super easy. Yeah, well, what I do is as the water evaporates out of the wet palette, which it will. Um, I have just a little kind of a squeeze bottle to make it easy. Just kind of open it up and replace the water. And you could see in the edge where, you know, you could, see, you could see right down to the bottom. So you can really see how much water is in the palette. And um, so this just allows me to add water right to the palette without getting it all over the parchment paper. And it does, you know, as I'm adding the water, it's just kind of soaking into the sponge. So while I'm working, I just keep an eye on it. You know, if, if it looks like it's low uh, on water, I just add a little bit of water and keep it going. And again, you don't want to get, <clears throat> you don't want to get water on the parchment because the water will just sit on the parchment indefinitely. It's pretty crazy. So you want that as your working area. So I don't. To try not to get any water on the palette and this like I said I left this open all night so it's pretty dry there we go so now I can see the see the water and that it's kind of at the level of the sponge I go just below the level of the sponge and now that's back to normal if, if I do happen to get water on the, the uh, parchment, I was just grabbing a little bit of paper towel and then just kind of dabbing it where the water hits so that I get that working surface back. So it's pretty crazy. Then at the end of the night, <clears throat> move this foam sheet back. At the end of the night, it's got a uh, rubber seal on it on the cover. So I just uh, seal that up. 
And like I said, when it came back the next day, the paint was still in exactly the same condition that it was the day before. Like I said, I ran almost about a whole week with one drop of paint. Now, that being said, <sighs> um, there's a lot of weird, you know, stuff going on as far as drawing the water out and putting water back in and back and forth on this one little drop of paint. It does change as it as as time goes on. So I was noticing by the end of the week that one droplet of paint was acting a little bit differently because what's happening is, is not only is the water evaporating out of these droplets, the uh, reducers that they use and the other components in this drop of paint are also evaporating as well. So what's happening is all those components are being replaced with water. So then it does, the paint does get kind of funky. So the way I, would, I was describing it was if you saw the movie uh, Pet Cemetery, they keep bringing the cat back but every time the cat gets more weird when they bring it back, it's the same kind of thing with your paint. So again, it's not designed to keep a drop of paint wet for a week, but uh, but I wanted to really push it and see, see kind of what happened. All right, as a final note, um, as you get into this and as you do your research on it, you'll see there's a ton of stuff on these. There's a ton of different manufacturers. Um, there's great uh, how-tos on how to make your own, like homemade version of this. I went through all of it. As I was going through all of it, I just got to the point where I'm like, by the time I go through and make one of these and tweak it to the way I want it to be and go through all that stuff, um, it's just going to be worth it for me to buy one, to buy one that's already had all the research done, everything's planned out. So you really have to look at like what kind of personality you are and what kind of time you have to spend and that kind of thing as to as to which way you go. You may find that you want to make this yourself or you may want to go for one of the ones that um, are a little bit less expensive. This one is one of the more pricey ones out of the ones I found, but it consistently got a great review for the way it's made, for the service, the, all of it. So I'm a big fan of if I need to save my own time and, you know, put my own time into certain things and not into other things that you know uh, may not may not pan out as well as far as you know return on investment um, I will I will invest in something like this where someone has already done all the work for me so that's exactly what Redgrass did they did a great job on this and um, and yeah I couldn't be happier like I said it's it's one of the more expensive wet palettes out there but um, by far I mean I, I know I'm gonna get this will pay for itself within the first month for, for, for the way I'm working so I am really happy with it. So there you go. So that is my Tech Tuesday for this week. Um, I'll be talking about this on the live feed and I can show you guys how it works for real on the live feed. So um, you can check that out on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and again, if you've liked or if you like this video and um, you want to see more of them, please consider subscribing and um, also dropping a like on this. That helps or a comment, too, if you've had other experiences with wet palettes or have some questions of something that I maybe glossed over that you missed. Um, I'd be more than happy. So drop those comments in there, too. And uh, that's what I got. So for Steve Leahy and this Tech Tuesday and his brand new wet palette, I will see you guys next time.